I, for one, have never been able to experience NFL free agency from the player's perspective. But with the power of technology, I have a feeling it's a little bit something like this. Let's talk some of the 2020 NFL free agents. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there. And welcome to our very first fantasy football video of 2020. Getting excited to get back in the swing of things. We have a lot of things planned here for the offseason. We'll be going to the Combine, the NFL Draft. Have a lot of information, draft guys just around the corner. So if you're looking for a lot of NFL information, you've come to the right spot. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, it's the offseason. Views are down. Hook a brother up, hit the like button for me because we don't mess around and we don't take a whole lot of time here and we're going to get into things pretty quick. I have some quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends that are all due to be free agents here in 2020. If they go to some other teams, there's some pretty big fantasy implications that could go along with it. Who are some of those names? We're talking about it right now. All right, so we're going to start off at the quarterback position and before I get into the first player, we actually had an article go up on the website here just a few days ago about a wish list items for, for all of the teams in the NFL. What is it that they really needed? So make sure you go check that article out after this video because there's a lot of other perspectives in there also. I'll have a link to it down below in the description. But here we go with quarterbacks, and there's some old guys at the top, right? I mean, we got the Drew Brees and Tom Brady, both free agents. Now, for Drew Brees, he's 41 years old. In the last 14 years... He spent them in New Orleans. I really can't see him finishing anywhere else but in New Orleans. I would expect Drew Brees to go back to the Saints. Tom Brady, uh, I don't know if anybody knows. Reports are coming out now that they're willing to offer him up to $30 million a year to stay in New England. He's been there for 20 years. Could we really see Tom Brady in a different uniform? There's going to be some teams that actively go after him, whether it's enough to get him out of New England that remains to be seen. He really wants some, uh, some weapons around him. He's not so concerned with the money. Why? Because he's swimming in it and wipes his butt with $100 bills at this point. He wants to win football games, and he wants some weapons. It's going to be an interesting offseason to see what happens to Tom Brady. What about Phillip Rivers? He's 38 years old and spent the last 16 years with the Chargers. But we already know they're parting ways, and he's not coming back. Could we see Phillip Rivers? Go to one of these teams that may be drafting a quarterback in the draft, and he's kind of their, their bridge quarterback to get them by for the next year or two to really mentor some young quarterbacks. That's entirely possible. Phillip Rivers is definitely a guy who's going to draw some interest from a few teams here in the league. What about Jameis Winston? He's only 26 years old, and he's played the last five years in Tampa Bay. But is he really a franchise quarterback? That is the biggest question so far for his career. He's thrown 121 touchdowns to 88 interceptions. The guy likes to throw interceptions a lot, but he's still young. And if you surround him with the right talent, we've already seen that he can put up some pretty decent numbers. If you just don't pay attention to the turnover column, he's still worth a start in the NFL. He'll fall somewhere if it's not back in Tampa Bay. Uh, Dak Prescott, a quarterback that a lot of people just want to love him or hate him. There's nobody really that's in between, and a lot of that has to do with being on the Cowboys, but for the last four years, he's found himself in Dallas, and more than likely, he's going to be franchise tagged, if I had to guess this year. They have some people to pay there for the Dallas Cowboys, Amari Cooper being one of them. I have a feeling Dak Prescott's going to find himself franchised, and that's not a bad thing. That means he'll make a lot of money here this year, and they can revisit the contract again next offseason. Last guy here on the list, it's Ryan Tannehill. Yes, the comeback player of the year in 2019 with the Tennessee Titans, Ryan Tannehill. A couple years ago, had I even brought Ryan Tannehill's name up on a list of free agents, nobody would have given two craps. But the guy came in down the stretch, took the Tennessee Titans to the playoffs, and really you know, transformed that offense in Tennessee, made them more of a throwing team at times whenever they needed it to be. He's got some young weapons there, and Ryan Tannehill is going to have some interest in the free agent market here in the offseason. Now, there's a few teams that need some quarterbacks here this offseason. Who are a few of those? Well, Cincinnati, we know they're one of them possibly. More than likely, Joe Burrow, the number one overall pick, could be going there. The Chargers, 
We know Phillip Rivers, he's not in town. Who's going to be their quarterback? Is it Tyrod Taylor or is it Easton Stick? Hopefully it's Easton Stick just because the name's fun to say, but they'll be looking for somebody, the Miami Dolphins. Do they bring back Fitzmagic? Do they draft a rookie and just use Fitzmagic over the next year or so to acclimate that rookie? That's a possibility. What about the Carolina Panthers? Is Cam Newton a Panther at the beginning of the season? He's owed a lot of money, around $20 million a year. Do they want to pay that? for Cam Newton here with this new coaching staff. This is going to be one of these guys that would not surprise me to surprise me to see him traded at some point here in the offseason. Who really wants to pay that high price tag, though? There's very few teams that will be looking at him. So that's another interesting take here for the, the Carolina Panthers. But as you can see, there's some talent out there for the quarterback position, but not like there is for the running back position. Take a look at this list. A lot of big names in the running back column also, and no, these are in no specific order But LaShawn McCoy is going to be the first name we talk about. Does he have anything left in the tank? Does he come back? He was a healthy scratch most of the postseason for the Kansas City Chiefs, which is a little surprising. You'd figured he'd at least be active, at least there in the Super Bowl, tried to to, to, you know, be on the field there for something he's been chasing for a long time with Andy Reid. It did not happen. He did not have a horrible year. He struggled with injuries off and on. Does he find himself back in Kansas City as more of a role player? possible uh, but he still has a little bit left in the tank not quite what we saw you know in years past with with just Buffalo or or, or Philadelphia by any means but he could find a good role player on a uh, Super Bowl contending team to really give them some depth at the running back position Carlos Hyde he had himself a quiet 1,000 yard uh, rushing year Uh, I mean he had a career high in carries 245 carries for Carlos Hyde a guy who kind of bounced around to a few different teams Kind of found himself a little bit of a home there in Houston. But what do they do going forward with Carlos Hyde? Does he move out of town? Do they keep him there and just eat up targets and carries on the ground? But he's another one of these guys that's able to handle a fairly large workload. If there's a team out there that wants to do more of a running back by committee, Carlos Hyde, not a bad option. He'll be available. Uh, What about Melvin Gordon? I mean, this guy had 900 total yards and nine touchdowns in just 11 games this season. But... Has he burned his bridge with the Los Angeles Chargers? And now that Phillip Rivers is out of town, are they going to kind of move more toward a youth movement there for the Chargers? I mean, Melvin Gordon is is an elite running back in this league. And depending where he falls, he could be in line for a huge, huge 2020 season. He's definitely somebody we're keeping a very close eye on. Uh, As far as the next guy on the list... If he goes anywhere else but Tennessee, I'm going to be completely shocked. It's Derrick Henry. He's the 2019 NFL rushing leader. He had over 300 carries on the ground and 30 touchdowns in his last two years combined. The guy is a beast, a workhorse. They have one of the top offensive lines there in Tennessee, and they're going to build that offense once again around the running game. And if they do retain Ryan Tannehill, and that really opens up that offense in Derrick Henry, has himself a little bit of a repeat season next year. Love Derrick Henry. He's going to be commanding a buttload of money. He said in a recent interview that Zeke's number, that's the floor. That's where they want to start at the negotiations. That's a lot of money, but I can't see Derrick Henry playing anywhere else besides Tennessee. Next up, Austin Eckler. Now, he's a restricted free agent, so this one is a little bit different, and I really can't see the Chargers letting him go. He has 2,500 total yards and 17 total touchdowns over his last two seasons combined. He has done great in the absence of Melvin Gordon. He is a dual threat back that is more lethal out of the backfield catching the ball than he is running between the tackles. And he can really do a lot of work in this offense uh, all season long. No matter what kind of game plan, what kind of game script, he can't really be scripted out of it. His, his usage could be through the chart, especially if there is no Melvin Gordon. He's a guy we're taking a look at here just to make sure he goes back to L.A. Adrian Peterson, he's going to be 35 years old this coming up season, but he's averaged 1,100 total yards and six touchdowns over his last two years. Really, for Adrian Peterson, the biggest question is the health of Darius Geis. Can they keep him healthy long enough to where they don't need Adrian Peterson? That's kind of why he's been there. They just haven't been able to count on Geis, and Adrian Peterson may be old, but at this point, he's borderline pretty reliable. You know what I mean? He's somebody who you can turn around and hand the ball to 15 to 18 times a game, no worries. So depending on where he falls, uh, regardless of where he goes, I'm more than likely to see him back with Washington. He kind of fits what they have going there in this offense at this time, being that their backfield is pretty banged up. Uh, But Adrian Peterson is still a very serviceable running back, even though dude getting old. 
uh, Kenyon Drake. Uh, it feels like he's been around for a long time, but he's only 26 years old, and he had a career high in touches, 220 touches this past season. He averaged 5.2 yards per carry with Arizona. We already know he finished strong down the stretch. The guy was unstoppable the late second half of the season. David Johnson kind of disappeared, and Kenyon Drake really seemed to fit the offense that's run by Cliff Kingsbury and the Arizona Cardinals. If he resigns there, he's definitely somebody who's very intriguing for the 2020 season. Last guy here on the list, Jordan Howard of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, he really struggled to stay healthy this year, a career low in touches, and really Miles Sanders is the biggest problem here. He, show, he showed down the uh, the second half of the, the season that he can carry the workload in the backfield here for the Philadelphia Eagles. He's explosive, a lot more explosive than Jordan Howard. Not quite as powerful, maybe, as Jordan Howard, but they won't miss him if they don't re-sign him. Do they want to pay that extra money uh, when they can just utilize the likes of Miles Sanders and Boston, Boston Scott? More than likely, no. Jordan Howard could bounce around to another team, but depending where he falls... Could definitely be a fantasy asset because he is capable of handling 200 carries a season on the ground. Somebody to pay attention to here once again this offseason. Uh, some of the, the teams that are looking for running backs, there's not a whole lot of teams out there. I mean, running backs are almost dime a dozen once you get past you know the top 10, 12 elite guys. Tampa Bay, why? Rojo sucks. Miami, what's going on with the Miami backfield? I mean, Patrick Laird, nah, I don't think he's the answer there long term. What about Houston? We just talked about how Carlos Hyde may be gone. If he does if he does leave, who's going to be the running back for the Houston Texans? A lot of question marks out there uh, for that backfield. Also, these are the teams that we need to be focusing on because you never know, even in the NFL draft, they may add a piece here or there to where they don't need to go out in free agency and sign anybody. But what about the wide receiver position? There's a few names out there that are a little intriguing here for 2020 also. First wide receiver we have up on the list is going to be Emmanuel Sanders. San Francisco 49ers, he only got five targets a game with San Francisco. And that's a little crazy because he started off so well with them, kind of faded down the stretch, wasn't 100% healthy. But the biggest issue with Emmanuel Sanders is Debo Samuel. The dude is breaking out. He broke out the second half of the season, looked great in the postseason, and now there's a possibility that Jalen Hurd, a wide receiver that you may not know much of, more of a wide receiver tight end hybrid who was out all season, could come back in 2020. If that's the case, maybe they move on from the aging Emmanuel Sanders. He's definitely somebody who could could go to a Super Bowl contending team, kind of like he did this year, uh, play that slot role, kind of give them another wide receiver for some depth. So he's a, he's a name we're paying attention to. What about A.J. Green, Cincinnati Bengals? He didn't even play in 2019, but all signs pointing to him coming back in 2020. But does he stay in Cincinnati? Does he resign there if they draft Joe Burrow at quarterback? Lord knows Joe Burrow could use the added weapons. I know he does have Tyler Boyd, Auden Tate. A.J. Green would be another great complement to his game also. But A.J. Green just struggles staying healthy. He hasn't had more than 75 receptions in a season since 2013. An elite talent, just struggles staying healthy. Where does he fall in 2020? He's a name we're watching. Along with Amari Cooper. We mentioned his name a little bit earlier when we talked about Dak Prescott. Amari is probably going to get paid by the Cowboys. Now, he really ended the season slow. But, I mean, this new offense in Dallas uh, it was really needing to include Amari Cooper with Mike McCarthy there, the new head coach. Uh, Amari Cooper will be one of the focal points of this offense. I expect him to see a huge contract at some point here in the offseason. What about Randall Cobb? He's also reunited with Mike McCarthy from their days in Green Bay together. Does he re-sign with Dallas for that familiarity to this offense to kind of give them that safety valve out of the slot? That's a possibility. Another name we're paying attention to. What about Brashad Perryman? And if you told me I'd be talking about Brashad Perryman a year ago, I probably just would have ignored you and called you a troll. But we need to kind of talk about him. I mean, he looked great down the stretch for Tampa Bay. He really benefited from the injuries of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. But over his last five games of the season, he had 506 yards and five touchdowns. That is a huge end to the season for Brashad Perryman. And if they don't bring him back to Tampa Bay, he could turn into somewhat of a weapon uh, in a few other offenses out there in the NFL. What about Robbie Anderson, a guy who I believe has been sorely underutilized for a long time. He really needs to get out of New York Jet wide receiver hell. I mean, he has been stuck there for years and is just not getting the opportunity. He's only had over 100 targets once in his career. 
put him in a, in a high power offense and this guy could put up some huge numbers. And there's a few teams out there that really need some wide receivers. What about the Oakland Raiders? They definitely need some help on the outside. Outside of Tyrell Williams last season, it was really hit or miss. The Packers, who's going to be opposite of Devontae Adams? Geronimo Allison, he's a free agent. He may not be coming back. They need to have somebody opposite him to pull away some defensive attention. The Jets, if they end up losing Robbie Anderson, they're going to need some help, but not like anybody really wants to go to the Jets. What about the Broncos? Can we get somebody solid opposite of Cortland Sutton and really give Drew Locke multiple weapons in that passing game? That's something we need to pay attention to. What about the Buffalo Bills? Let's give Josh Allen a big body deep threat. I would love to see the likes of a Robbie Anderson in Buffalo. The deep ball with Josh Allen and Robbie Anderson could be lethal. Definitely some options there, and there's some teams needing some wide receivers. So definitely something to pay attention to here in the offseason. We do have a few tight ends also, but let's be realistic. Every team, not you know Kansas City, San Francisco, or Philadelphia, they need a tight end. And there's a few that are available out there this offseason that can make a move and really make a splash in fantasy football. First one up, it's going to be Vance McDonald. Now, I know he was a huge disappointment this last year for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but really, the injury to Big Ben played a big part in that. The carousel that was the quarterback position for the Pittsburgh Steelers did not help Vance McDonald one bit. If Big Ben comes back and he's healthy and he's not 400 pounds, I like Vance McDonald. What about Hunter Henry? He's due to be a free agent. He's yet to play a full year. Uh, but, I mean, this could be a new direction like we talked about earlier for the Chargers. Do they bring him back? I mean, he had 76 targets, 55 receptions, and 652 yards. Those are all career highs in 2019. The ceiling is very high for Hunter Henry. I would like to see him back with the Chargers. But if he goes elsewhere with a top quarterback, could have himself a huge year. What about Eric Ebron? He had himself a huge drop-off in 2019. I think everybody and their mother saw that one coming, but he's only going to be 27 years old. And if he can find the right offense that really utilizes the tight end position, he is somebody who could go out there and produce solid tight end numbers. Remember, there's not a whole lot of great tight ends in football. He doesn't need to go out there and catch 100 passes for 1,200 yards and 15 touchdowns to be a top 10 tight end in the NFL. He can do a lot less than that and still be a top 10 uh, tight end in the NFL. And uh, falling in the right situation, we could see those numbers once again for Eric Ebron. What about Austin Hooper? Does Atlanta, do the Falcons really let him walk? I mean, he's coming off a career year, 97 targets, 75 catches, 787 yards, and six touchdowns. Those are all career highs. Some really good names available at the tight end position. I won't be surprised if a lot of these tight ends find themselves back with the, the team they were with last year. Uh, at this point in the NFL, if you have a solid tight end, you might as well keep them as long as you're not going to have to pay them an exorbitant amount of money uh, just because there's very few out there that are really game-changing. Some of these names have that ability, and I would be surprised if teams just let them walk. Uh, but like I said, if it's not the Chiefs, if it's not the 49ers, if it's not the Eagles, Everybody in the NFL would like to have a better tight end. And there's some decent options here on this list. All right, now, this is where we have a little bit of fun. We just went through a few of the top free agents here for 2020. But now we get to play the guessing game. All right, down below in the comments section with some of the names that I have mentioned, take a guess. Where do you think a few of these guys actually land? I mean, there's some, some real intriguing possibilities out there, but we want to make this as interactive as possible. That's something that we always do on this channel. We're trying to involve you, the viewer. So throw it down below in the comment section where you see a few of these teams landing. And you never know, I may call you out here on the show uh, if you get it right. I may, th I may flash them up on the screen. Uh, you know, we're keeping track of this. We're trying to be as interactive as possible. And I would love to have these conversations back and forth with you. So leave those comments down below. We greatly appreciate the support. Uh, if, if you have an opportunity, make sure you head over to our website, thefantasyheadliners.com. A lot of other great information over there as far as DFS articles. Uh, I mentioned earlier we have that article over there, the wish list items for all 32 teams. There's, there's a short write-up for every single team and what they really hope to, to accomplish here in the offseason. So go check out that article. There's a link to it down below in the description. The draft guide's right around the corner. 
but we greatly appreciate you guys' support. I did put a poll out there on the community tab earlier uh, on YouTube here, so go check that out also. I'm trying to get some feedback of what you guys would like to see or maybe possibly have added to the draft guide here in 2020. So let me know. Hit up the community tab after this video. We greatly appreciate your support, and like always, talk to you later.